part three of WordPress 101. So, because all of you have a website already installed, nobody's fresh here. So I couldn't show you how to go to the GoDaddy and hosting and do all this stuff. Okay, so we're just gonna start right away. So when you install WordPress on your domain, in order for you to log in, remember always after your domain address, let's say usufchowdery.com forward slash, you're always going to put WP dash admin. Okay, that's how you log in. You always have to put like WP, like after the dot com, you see that? Dot, dot com forward slash WP dash admin. Once you do that, it will ask you to enter the username and password. That's how you typically log in, okay? Because there are people still are confused. They're like, how can I log into this thing? I'm like, just WP dash admin. All right? And let me check something else real quick because by default, See, what is the 2016? I don't see 2016. Oh, there you go, 2016. Wow, that's 2016. Ah, that's 2016, huh? The latest and greatest. Let's see. For now, I'm just going to use this, see how it looks, okay? Mm -hmm. Let me try something. The reason my screen looks different because of the projector. Because of the size, uh, it kind of gives me a different look on the theme because the theme doesn't look like that in reality. So let me see if I can do this. All right. Much better, right? I'm like, oh no! I'm back. What did I do? I think it's in English. Better, right? Okay. So now see how it looks. Uh, there you go. See that? So this is uh, theme twenty sixteen. Okay. Uh, this is a default theme. Uh, once you install WordPress, it will automatically add twenty sixteen. Okay, and it's mobile friendly as you can see. If I shrink it, see what happens? It's a responsive base. Okay, there's another tool uh, I want you to write it down. It's called uh, uh, Responsinator. Like Terminator? Responsinator. Okay, so let's see if I can pull it up. Responsinator. This tool, what it does, it will show you how your website looks like on most of the popular mobile devices. There you go, responsinator, responsinator.com. Okay, so I can take this domain address here, Redeem Furniture Company, right? I'll put it right here, okay? While seeing this, click go. Then it will ask me, you don't have HTTPS, no problem, switch to the regular HTTP. And there you go. So now on iPhone 6, I can even go inside. You see that? Like a simulator, right? So that's iPhone 5 portrait. Then iPhone 5 landscape. Then iPhone 6. See that? Then Android. Oh no, iPhone 6 Plus. Then you have what, what it says here. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, Android Nexus 4. So it shows you how it looks, right? I mean, this is how mobile base is. See that? That's pretty awesome, right? Okay. So when you log into the dashboard, by default, you will get theme 2016. Okay. And so right now, <clears throat> let's go step by step. Understand what each section means. Okay, like what each of these sections mean right here. So for instance, of course, the name of your website is going to be on the top right here. So y'all can see this, right? Uh, this thing right here, see this thing right here with like a circle arrow? What it basically is, anytime when you log into WordPress and WordPress tells you, hey, you have a plugin that needs an update or you have a theme 
that needs an update or WordPress needs an update is going to show up right here. Right now it says two. Why? Because there is a plugin update required and something else. So this is what is it for? Okay. Uh, this one right here, like the bubble, what is this for? This is mainly for the comments. Comments and what? Comments and blog posts. Absolutely. When you have a blog post and somebody comments your blog, it will show you how many comment commented. Okay, so when you click on it, it will take you to the comment section right away. New, this is where you have four options. You have posts, you have media, you have page, and you have user. And the funny thing is, I would say majority of the people when they log into WordPress, I don't think most of the people look at this stuff. Most of them are gonna look where? On the left hand side, right? But I'm just showing you, I want you to know, I want you to know every single thing on the back end. That's why I'm showing all this thing. Okay? Then when you go far right, this is the name, the username that you logged in. Uh, you can edit your profile or you can log out. This is what is it for. Okay? If you click on the screen options right here. Right? If you click on the screen options, this will tell you at a glance, activity, quick draft, WordPress news, and welcome. So you have the welcome right here, this one. You see? Then you have at a glance, quick draft, WordPress news, and the activity. The activity means who logged in, who commented. So if you have like a developer or a programmer or a writer or a blogger, when they log in, you can see who logged in and who did what kind of activity. Does that make sense? I'm sorry, where, where are you? This is the home page. That's the home page. The dashboard. Make dashboard sure you homepage. make sure you switch your your theme to 2016. I did. I did. Okay. okay. All right. So the WordPress news basically it's it's extracted from the WordPress.org. So when you go to WordPress.org, it has the same latest news there, but on the dashboard it automatically pull it up for you. So if you don't want to go to WordPress.org, you can just look it from here. Okay. So this is what is it for. And you can remove all these, you can just click uncheck this, uncheck this, uncheck all this, and there's nothing there. Okay, and you can just put it back, it's up to you. Does that make sense? That's what the screen options are for. And the screen options are different from page to page. So if I go to post, the screen option will be a little bit different. If I go to pages, the screen option for that page will be a little bit different, okay? When you click help, here you have a documentation it will take you back to the wordpress.org and it will give you some sort of step-by-step -step how to use this website. And unfortunately, some of their documentation is not that, it's not that user-friendly because they're done by developers. And they actually need somebody like us to go and contribute. If you learn something and you can explain it better in an easy way, you can go to wordpress.org and submit, hey, I can explain this more easily, let's say for beginners or businesses, and you become a contributor in the community. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's what the document is for. And the support forum, when you click on the support forum, it will take you to wordpress.org, and from there you can join the forum and ask them questions about the website and whatnot. That's what it is for, okay? That's a yes. If, um, so for instance, um, whenever you're talking about like updating what the main, head, what mm -hmm. main page consists of, mm -hmm. um, so for example, Ashley has her login info and I have mine. If I change what it looks like on mine, will it reflect on hers as well? That's an excellent question. Yes, and it depends on what kind of permission of access you have. Okay. Because uh, I'm glad you asked this question. There is, uh, let's see, uh, subscribers, administrators, editors, authors, and contributors. Okay. So if Ashley gives you permission as contributor, you can only blog, but you cannot post a blog. You can log in, type, in, type the blog post, but you cannot post it. She has to post it on your behalf. If she gives you the option as an author, you can blog and you can post. Ashley doesn't need to approve it for you. Okay, that's the author. And in fact, if you if you have a guest blogger, you give them the author permission. If you trust them, give them the author permission. Okay, because you don't want to do too much work. If you give them contributor, now you have to go back and you know just make it easier for them. Give them the author permission. If you uh, let's say you have uh, somebody that will. Uh, basically check and see other authors from you know quality and approve it for them you can give them the option of as an editor because they can write they can blog they can post and they can post for others or give permission for others to be blogged on their behalf does that make sense and administrator means you can do everything so it's actually give you administration access so whatever changes you make on the design on the pages of course it's going to reflect 
So you don't have to, you know, go back. Does that make sense? That's what it's important. Okay? So right here, overview, it talks about, you know, welcome to WordPress dashboard, navigation, just small information, layout, what is the drag and drop, and what is the content, and, and that's about it. Basically, it takes you, like, what is at glance? You see, at glance means display a summary of content on your site. Uh, activity, shows upcoming scheduled posts. So it explains to you what is the front welcome page. It's all right there. So you guys don't need me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so there you go. So that's the first thing. Now, when you go back to new, so we have post. And what is the post for? Blog. Blog. So remember that. Anytime you want to do a blog post, you don't go to page, you go to post. Okay? And write this thing down. <clears throat> By default in WordPress, the home page is the default blog page. The home page by default is the blog page. That means every time you do a blog post, the front page will have a bunch of blocks. That's how it's built. Okay, that's the first thing. Secondly, by default, you can't have more than one blog page. Okay? You can't have more than one blog page. But there's a workaround. I'm going to show you later on how to have two blogs on the navigation. You know? Like, for example, if I show you this customer right here, This is one of my clients called the Asperger 101. It's a nonprofit. As you can see, there are eight blog pages. I'm like, what? But you said you, said you can have more than one. That's true. If I click on medical, then all the blog posts about in the medical niche for autism. Does that make sense? So there's a, there's a work behind it. But by default, you can't. By default, there's only one blog page. But I'm going to show you later on how to have multiple Blog page. Because some business, what they do, like the news, they have a current news, history, politics, business, but they're all blog posts, but there is a way to, to create that. But, but you need to understand that by default, no, there's only one blog page, and the home page is the blog page, and you can also change the home to a static, just like in Kirby, or just like in uh, any other website, you can make it look like with a video, but not like a bunch of blogs. Does that make sense? I'm going to show how to do that. And another thing I forgot to mention in the beginning, when you build the website, you have two options. Do you, want, do you want to build the website as a content base? Or do you want to build the website as a retail store? So content base, like this. See this one? It's a content based website. Why? Can somebody tell me why I consider this or why this is considered a content base? Because the front page has a bunch of blog posts. It's a content, content, content. That's all, the, that's all is there. Right? Let me show you another example. Uh, look at Michael Hyatt. He's a very awesome, well-known expert. Look at his website. You see, a virtual mentor, right? He has a lead capture on the front page right away. Get my free ebook. Shave ten hours of your work ethic. Okay. Put your name and email, and there you go. And the front is what? Bunch of blog. That is very good for SEO because the homepage has a lot of content. You know, so that is considered a content-based website. Okay. Let me give you another example. One of my favorite folks, Marie Corleo. Okay. Anybody knows Marie Corleo? If you don't, you should. Okay, you can follow her YouTube channel. She's an amazing lady. So look at that. Get anything you want. Oh, there's a pop-up. All right, you deserve a business. Love you, love. We can help. Okay. Our website is also. A content base, see that? Oh, she was at Oprah too. How do you spell her name? Uh, Marie Forleo. F O R L E O. Yeah. So check out her YouTube channel, she's really awesome. Okay, it's like what content base? Why? Because a lot of content up front. That's what, so you have to make a decision do you want a website to be a content based website or do you want a website just like. But you know, it's just like uh, just like this, right? It's a content base. See that? The content base, just like a retail store. See that? That's a content base. Ah, some changes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm like nice. 
Yeah, we fixed a little bit, but yeah, you guys want this thing here. Awesome. Okay. Content base. Uh, I like that. I'm like, wow. Uh, thank God. Because <laughs> this is something, this is like a picture. I'm like, that's fine. Okay. So that's content base, right? More like just, you know, like a retail store. So you have to make a decision how you, do you want it. You want to have a video and a lead capture or something like that, okay? So make a decision. All right. So when you come to new post, let's go ahead and click on post. Here, you're going to put the title of the blog post. This is what is it for, right? And as you notice, this is what we call the, 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 to the toolbar toggle. When you click on it, it will give you some options. You see that? Like, you know, link, uh, insert, read more, and whatnot. You have the visual option, and you also have text. So what's the difference? Visual, just like us, you're writing, writing a content in a Word document. Text, mostly coding. See that? So if you want to code or if you want to embed some sort of, I don't know, videos or audios, you can go to the code, uh, text section and drop that code right there, okay? On your right-hand side, you have the publish. You can save the content as draft. You can click the preview. You can, under the visibility, when you click on, when you click on visibility, you can also set up a password. So let's say you wrote some content and you don't want anybody else to see it except maybe a specific staff or team you can put a password. So they can enter the password and look at the blog, give some feedback on whatnot. So you can have that option. And this option right here is stick this post to the front page. So if you have a content-based website, and you have a bunch of blogs, you, you, you basically have blogs every week, but you want one of the blogs to be always on the top, so you're gonna select what? Stick, stick this, yeah. So that means it will always stay on the top and any new blog will be below it. Just like in Facebook, when you do pin the post in Facebook, right? So you keep adding new posts, but the one that you pinned it still sits on the top, right? That's the same feature. Okay, that's what it's for. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a nice tip, right? Yeah. So there you go. So if you have like some sort of promotion going on and you blog about it, make sure you use the uh, stick this post. It's gonna always be there for any customer that go to that section to see it. Then of course, you can also see the new stuff below that, okay? Okay, all right. Uh, publish here you can set up the date so let's say you're so busy don't have time to write every week maybe in one weekend you write four blogs and you just post it right there and select a date and it will automatically be published on that specific day so that way you don't have to do it every day does that make sense so that's what it's for okay now this section called format this does not show up with most of the theme. This is just for theme 2016, so you don't have to worry about it. Basically what it is, when you post something in the blog, if you select video, the design looks like it's meant for the video. If you select like a quote, the design looks like it's for the quote. Does that make sense? So, but most themes don't get this option. This is only for theme 2016 and 2015 and so forth. But most themes don't have that, okay? When you scroll down to categories, categories are so important, uh, especially if you go into blog, constantly or on a, on a weekly basis, you have to categorize your content. So let's say in my example, or let's say in my example, I'm a digital marketer. So I talk about online marketing, SEO, social media, and whatnot. In social media, I can talk about Facebook, Periscope, Twitter. Does that make sense? In SEO, I can talk about organic and Google, all those categories. So when I write content, I can select, set up those categories. So when somebody comes to my blog page, I have tons of blog, I'm like, Okay, you know what, I just want to learn the SEO. So they're going to see the category SEO, they're going to click on it, then all the topic within SEO will show up. So that makes it easier for your customer to read the content. Don't just leave the category empty. I'm going to show you how to create those categories and how to attach it to your blog. In fact, when you guys looked at Asperger 101, the, uh, when, you, when you guys saw the, uh, the eight pages on the top, those are actually categories. Those are not pages. There's a category that were added on the navigation. So it looks like it's actually a page, but it's actually not a page, it's just a category. That's what it is, okay? All right, any question? We good? Tags, this, I know a lot of people say use tags. Tags typically, I don't think it helps with the SEO. Tags are for something like, if you have, if you have a search box, on your website, like you know, you have like a search box on the website. If if you if I'm talking about plumbing tips and I have a search box, and instead of having the customer go through the category, they can just do a search, you know, plumbing tips, 
and any tags, any keyword that is attached to my blog post will show up. That's what it's in for. Does that make sense? It has nothing to do with SEO. It is something to make it easier for your readers to search for a topic based on the search. If you have the search box, if you don't have it, don't worry about it. Don't use it. Does that make sense? I mean, some of us don't even have a search box, then why are you using the dashboard? Nobody can search for it. So don't use it, okay? Feature image, that basically means, uh, you know how here, every blog post, let me show you, every blog post comes with an image, right? They come like with, with, the, with the title and there's an image. So the feature image is this. So this is feature image. So that would be repetitive on every, What's the difference between the feature image and inputting the image into the blog? Excellent question. So the thing with the feature image, right now, as you can see, I have a blog, the home page is the blog page, right? So I have the title of the blog post, I have an image, and I have a short snippet. That means just a small read more so they can take me to the actual blog post, right? So the feature image is for that, it's like a preview, it's like a, you know, like a trailer. Here's the image for this content. Does that make sense? So this image doesn't have to be the same when I, when I click on this actual blog, that image doesn't have to be inside the blog. So that's what the featured image is for. Does that make sense? Because I'm gonna see, like for instance, Michael Hyatt, if I go to Michael Hyatt, for example, because what happened is you definitely need images. Why? Because it's easy on the eye, is attract, is, is, is attracting. The mistake that people do, they have the, con they have the title, Right? And a short uh, description of the blog, but there's no image. That's boring for the yeah. eye. Like, yeah. But when you have an image that is associated with the content, like, oh, what is that? Does that make sense? So in the feature image, you can add that image specifically for that content. Does that make sense? So right here, this is the feature image. But, so but if, if you, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. So if you have a blog, mm -hmm. you can add more than one image. Though. Absolutely. You can add the feature image just so I can see this. But when I click the actual blog, you might have different images in the blog content itself too. So there's one featured image for the whole site? No, the one featured image for every blog for post. every blog post. Yes. So if I click on this one, like for example, let's see if I click on, this is a featured image. I if I click I this. I think the way he's saying it, it, it's, so basically like that, that right there is the featured image on one of these blog posts. But if you were to hit the actual, go to the actual blog, not instead of looking at it on another page. Mm -hmm. So like for Kirby's, if we're going to post. We're gonna post something and say primary special and then share a picture of the prime rib. That's gonna be on our home page. It's not gonna actually be the blog post page. So if you hit on that from our home page, then it takes you to the blog page where all the images show. Okay, guys, so check this out. This is one of my client, right? If I click on blog, okay. So these are the featured image. Okay, a featured image that came with the blog post. I mean, I can have the same image in the blog too, again. You can have two images. You can have as many as you want, but the feature is just, well, it's like the preview of your blog post with an image. That's what it is. Well, think about this one. It's a preview okay. of your blog post. On a different page, on, on, on This is the blog page. Like and a these cover are, of the book. There you go, cover of every title. Cover of every title. So these are, you see, these are blog posts. See that? Okay. Every blog post, has an image because the image is attracting. If you don't have an image, they're like, oh, what is that, right? So that's what featured image means. For every blog post, no, that's just, uh, that's very really fun. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, it's non-surgical stuff. But you see that, right? Yes. I mean, you can have the same image in the blog, that's fine, but this is something to attract the eye. Maybe this will be shocking, like, what is this, right? So that's what featured image is. Is this blog, the way this blog is set up, is this a, um, how do we get that? <laughs> is it a plugin? This or? is, no, this is a custom build. Okay. Yeah, this is a custom build. So, in, you guys don't have that, the Kirby? It's a different setup. It just looks, more. it can look a lot cleaner and more engaged, you know, more inviting. <laughs> Oh, uh, what happened? Let's see. What happened to the blog? We took that blog oh, and there's I a click on it there. Just click on one of the locations and you'll see. Yeah, yeah, and then you go to blog. It was too confusing. It was on the home page. It was on the blog page. It was on the just locations down. blog page. Okay, wait it's, on, it's on this page now. Just scroll down. Yeah, yeah so, so first thing first. Man, I'm like lost. What happens? Okay, there's so many options here. Okay. But, but you need to also have it somewhere here, okay? 
uh, because nobody knows if this is the location, maybe. Yeah. You yeah. Need to, you need to add it somewhere here. Then secondly, you see this is a uh, this is a blog post, right? Mm -hmm. But there has to be image below that. Right. So do we put the image first? Do we do a different? Is there a different layout? Uh, you should have it. You should have it under the featured image. You should have it. But you have a featured image option. Yeah, you you, you just try. throw it there. Okay. You throw okay. it there, and it should it should come up. So try that. Then we'll go back and see how it looks, yeah. Is, is there a, I'm on the add new post from 2016. Uh -huh. It's just add media, right? We haven't gone there yet. We'll go there. That's okay. something different. Okay, yeah. Okay, let me show it right here. Check this out. You see the featured image right here? Mm -hmm. When you click on featured okay. image, okay, when you click on it, it takes you to the media. Okay. okay. It takes you automatically to the media. Does that make sense? You can upload files from your desktop or laptop Okay, or you can just select the images that you already uploaded to the media section. Okay, all right, now we understand 100% what is a featured image. It's the cover of the blog post. Okay, you're 100% sure? Mm -hmm. I see some visits. Yes, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, you two. Okay, do we understand what is a featured image? Yes, okay, now let's go up, <clears throat> add media. This is where. You can upload Word documents, PDF, Excel sheets, right? You can upload videos, you can upload audios. When it comes to video and audio, don't upload them because you are going to slow down your site. What you do with the audio and video, you upload them to YouTube. And you embed the YouTube. If it's an audio, you upload them to Sound, uh, SoundCloud or iTunes. Because you have to make sure about the SEO, you also have to be fast. You know, I mean, it can be fast to the visitor, but the back end could be slow a lot of processing happening it can slow down and that's not good for the search engine okay so that's my advice so when you click on add media of course it will take you to the library when we upload those information okay we'll go back to that soon yes two questions what's uh -huh. the audio for the audio you know itunes you know itunes uh -huh. you can upload the uh, audio in itunes you can also go to soundcloud okay soundcloud is another one you can set up an account upload your i don't know lectures audio and whatnot you can upload it there then you can embed it on your site as an audio. Okay, and then my next question, uh -huh. when you were in the media, um, if you're downloading, say, 10 PDF, 50 PDF files, mm -hmm. can you create folders in the media section to, what do you mean? Nope, unfortunately, you just, when you click uh, add, that's it, it's just a bunch of files. There's no folder. So you just upload files and that's it. Okay, so I couldn't put them in. Nope. No remember, how yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Remember, this is not this yeah. is this is not a uh, th this is a website. It's not a, uh, a Dropbox or anything. It doesn't do that. That's not functionality of uh, of a website. Does that make sense? But unfortunately, with with WordPress, there's no option. You just have to upload every file by itself. Okay. Even if you even if you collect all of them and upload it, they're gonna be separate. Files. Right. But once, no I get, once I get them there, I can't put them in the folder? There's no folder so option. There's no folder yeah, option. Yeah, let me look. Okay. Media library. See, there's no option. Just images. Well, there should be. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I think. Right. <laughs> for why do you need their folders? Because um, my other client mm -hmm. is a sales rep, and he, I just uploaded 30 catalogs, mm -hmm. and of course, they're all from different companies, so I was hoping to put like all the ABC company in one folder, Carl's books in another file with just his stuff, and just separate it that way. But instead, when I uploaded everything, it, of course, like you said, it just uploaded. Yeah, that's a good question. But think of it: it's a website. It's not a store. It's not a store yeah. service. The images that you upload is attached to a page. The file that you upload is attached to a page. It has a blog post. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because that's the functionality. It's not a place like a Dropbox or Cloud Drive or okay. anything like that. You see what I'm saying? Okay. I mean, sure. is there a possibility? Yes. If you ask a developer, they can probably do something to do something like that. But in reality, because it's like saying, I'm going to build a car, but I'm going to use it to drag a couple of houses with a car. It's not going to work because the, function, the job of the car is not to drag houses. Does that make sense? Right. So the website, the way they build it is for you to build a site. In fact, you don't want to even upload a lot of files because the more files you're going to upload, that means you're eating up the space. Do you see what I'm saying? I do, but then how are his customers going to see his catalog? Then you need to have more space in the server. They need to have 
fast uh, you know, DNS server. You have to have a lot of stuff to make it faster. Because if you upload huge files of images, what does that do to the website? It slows it down. Because the functionality of the website is not, it's not a portal. If, you, if you're going to build a website that has folders and files, then you don't need WordPress. You need like, something else. Hire a developer to build a portal, like you know, these expensive site that has all these functionality. Yes, but WordPress is supposed to be something very basic and very simple. Now, what you can do is this. You can go to WordPress.org, right? Mm -hmm. And do a search for a plugin that does that. So you can have folders. In I'm saying it's possibility. Oh, I'm not okay. saying it is. Okay. You can do a search and see if there's any plugin that grabs a folder or does storage and something like that. But I'm speaking from a website point of view because okay. website is a website. It's not a place to store it bunch of you know like, like 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 you know like a database kind of thing right so with this that's the function that you have but if i'm gonna go right now to plugin let's go do right now real quick plugins i'm gonna do a search for i don't know what is it folder mm -hmm. let's see if it's available mm -hmm. folder plugin upload for there you go bulk organize your media attachment custom post types pages and posts into folders but again it's only for pages and posts it's not for any files, okay? okay. Upload folder, change, uh, Google Drive. Okay, so you can connect to Google Drive. That's another option. So there are a few, but again, I don't know if it's exactly what you need. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Custom upload folder plus. Organize files by upload files. Okay, here you go. Custom upload folder plus. So there's a plugin that might do what you're looking for. Yeah, that's it. The point is, is all the user will be see the same information at the yes. same time. Yes. Okay, it's better if you put it in a separate server, only the yeah. de dedicate to download. Okay. It's, see? It's, it's like YouTube media, if you can put a server only for download file. That is better if you put it in the <coughs> Yeah. Okay. But it's possible because that's, I mean, what I'm trying to explain is that by default it's not there, but if you do a search like for plugin or different things, you can find it. But right now, that's what we did. I just did a folder. Look, oh, there are a few some plugins here. Look, there's so many of them, like almost a thousand okay. plugin that does something with folders. So somebody probably exactly asked what you're looking for and they built it. Okay, but make sure the website is not gonna become slow because more functionality, especially with download and whatnot, you gotta be very careful. Okay. Okay. Excellent question. Though. All right. Going back, we're still on the post. Any question here, how to do a blog post, how to preview, how to save the draft, what are all these options? Are these self-explanatory? Right? How do you get the ribbon to come up again? Which one? The, like the ribbon, the, the bold, italic, ABC. Stuff. Oh, this one? You're going to click on this here. Okay. Okay, but there's a plugin called Tiny MCE. We're going to add that plugin because that will give you extra features like, you know, font size, font style. Because this one doesn't have font style. You see, there's no font style and there's no font size, right? But we're gonna add another plugin that can actually give you those options. It's called Tiny MCE. Okay. Advanced, okay? I think we had it on your. Uh... I don't think we've ever had that one because we never have had different fonts. So mm. Okay, we'll do that. So this is for the blog post, right? It's pretty simple, right? Any question about the post? Are we good? All right. Secondly, media. This is where you're gonna upload. You can drag and drop, you can sell it from your, from your desktop and, and upload those files that I mentioned. Now here's the rule number one. Like I said, don't upload videos or audio because based on your server. If you have a dedicated server, you pay like $200 a month, maybe you can, but for now, don't do it. Now, if you upload any images, if you upload any images, make sure those images uh, are compatible with the 72 DPI, which is a dot per inch, not 300, 304 magazines and <laughs> it's too big. Make sure it's 72 DPI, okay? Secondly, <clears throat> you, wanna, you wanna write this thing down. Make sure that your, any file, whether it's image or Word document or whatnot, it is not more than one megabyte. Two is maximum. If you can do your best to make sure it's less than one megabyte, that'd be great. Maybe like 600 kilobyte or 700, that's fine. But don't go above one or two because Again, to, to have a better performance, okay? <clears throat> then, when you upload the image or any file, make sure that you give a proper name to that file. 
So if I take, take a picture of myself like that, I'm going to say Yusuf Chowdhury's face, .jpg, okay? And then upload it, okay? Make sure you give it a file name. Why? Because if you use a camera or a mobile device, automatically it will say ID, BMD, whatever, .jpg. Who search for that? Mm -hmm. Nobody searches for that. But if you give it a name, there's the possibility that the search engine can grab it. Is, is there any way to categorize and folders your images? No. <coughs> Before you upload, just give it a name and upload it. That was number three, right? Okay. That was number three? Okay. Now, number four, make sure, this is very important for SEO point of view. Make sure you add all text or all tag for every image. So when you upload it, WordPress will give you the option, would you like to add, I mean, the all text or all tag. So what's the benefit of the all text or all tag? What is the benefit? For the search engine, you are telling the search engine what, that, what this image is about. If I take a picture of an elephant, I'm going to say an image of an elephant. Okay? So the search engine will understand what this image is about. Okay? Secondly, people with visually impaired or blind folks, they need to know what the heck is this image is about. Because they have a software, they have a, uh, the mouse will tell them this is an image of an elephant. And Google loves that. So if you do your best to give an alt text, like a small description of what each image is, that will help the search engine and the person that cannot see. You're actually helping them. In fact, I think there's a federal code rule that you're supposed to actually do that, but most people don't know this. Okay, I don't remember exactly what's uh, the code for that, but for disability, does that make sense? Yeah. So when you, I'm going to show you a quick example. Let me try on this one right here. You said alt tab or alt text, are they the same thing? Yes, yeah, same thing. So here we go. I upload this image. Right, and if I click edit, if I click the edit image, it should be, there you go, alternative text. Okay, so I can say an image of Kirby's front, uh, whatever. <laughs> okay, entry. so, oh, entry, right, there you go, thank you. Entry, right, and that's it, and click update. All right, because this, and of course the name of the image has to be because the name you know should be. Okay, so that's the name of the file. And with the mistake that I made when I upload, uh, I didn't change the name of the file. Right, the file name should be like this. Okay, and of course I got the alt text that explains what that image is about. Okay. Because that's good for the search engine, it's also good for people that, you know... You so can like in a caption, we'll put it in a nice little box. The, yeah, what happens when you in, add in the caption, in the image itself, it will say what it is. You, I mean, it's option, you don't have to, but if you want to, it's up to you. Description, same thing. You don't have to, it's up to you. But alternative text, when it comes to SEO, on-site SEO, that's like a must. What's the, um, which one should we edit when we want to, when you're on an image, mm -hmm. and you're, You've got your mouse, and that shows up. That description shows up. When uh, you're just scanning over an image, uh -huh. like on our homepage banner, right? We should be labeling those as what they are. Some of the images are just like the alt text. They're the automatic DCS, blah blah blah. Yeah, I gotta change those. So yeah. that's actually because the, it, it it basically pulled up from the file name. So you need to make sure that the file name is not this, like here. Okay, so we change it. Just change file name. Yeah. Like that? Okay. Yeah, you can change the file name, and of course, make sure that you have like a something humanly readable. Okay. Also, because other, because what people used to do, they used to scam. They used to like manipulate the system by putting keywords in the alternative text. Just any keywords. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. I mean, you want you want to make sure that it's really authentic, really natural, really organic. Because for a human being to understand what that is. Now, another tip some people say, you can say something like this, you see? An image of Kirby's uh, front entry. Then after that I can put San Antonio Steakhouse and, you know, I can put the keyword after. Because I described the image, but I can put the keyword after. That's, that's okay. Does that make sense? That is fine. Yeah. Where does description show up? The description is going to show on the, on the search in the back. It's not going to show up anywhere on the front page. This one in the back. So then, again, you don't have to, yeah. but yeah. But the most important thing really is this: yeah. the alternative text or alt tag is very, very important. And most, I would say, nine out of ten of those that are out there don't even do that. The fact that you are going to do it is going to help you. Does that make sense? All right. So that there you go. So those are the tips, right, for the images. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go to page. 
as you can see, the page is similar to the post. <coughs> I said I don't say it's the same. I say it's similar. Why? Because in the blog post you don't have this page attribute. Okay. You don't have this. This is like basically, you know how, uh, here's another thing in WordPress. By default, every WordPress theme will have a sidebar by default. Yeah. Every page will have a sidebar. So what happens when you come to page attributes, you can actually disable the sidebar from one page to another. That's what it's there for. So if you, don't wanna, if you don't want to have a sidebar in the content page, you can just come here and select full width. Does that make sense? That's what it's there for. Okay. Uh, feature image, same thing for that particular page, not the blog post. Oh, but question: If you disable that sidebar for the one page, will you have will you be able to use fill up the whole page with text, or will you still have the sidebar and you're going to be limited in your text? Text and question. No, it's going to be all text. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's going to full text. There's not going to be anything on the side. Okay. It's not going to be an empty spot. It's going to be just all fill up the whole thing. Yes, okay. absolutely. Good question. Okay. When I used to be doing this. You could pick the page. You could pick whether it was three column or two column. Or is that in here? At all? That's an excellent question. That depends on the theme. Some theme comes with those options. They come with like one or two or three or four. Some of them only with two. Okay, but excellent question. But you don't have to worry about it because again, at the end of the day, is what I want to make sure that how I'm going to make my site so easy for my visitor to read and whatnot. Okay. All right. So that's the pages. Now let's talk about user. So this is where you can add somebody as what? As an admin, as a contributor, author, or editor. This is what you go and add the permissions. You're going to put the name and email, the username, email address, and the password right now because of the high security. People say, did anybody hear this from other people that don't like WordPress where they say WordPress is not, WordPress not secure? Have anybody heard that before? WordPress is not secure? Mm -hmm, yeah. From time to time, you'll have people say that. By default, WordPress is actually highly secure because, first of all, it's an open source application. That means a lot of developers work on it, right? And just to show you how secure it is, uh, I think in 2014, when a lot of, I don't know if it's 80%, I'm not sure what the number, but a lot of WordPress also were hacked, right? But not because of WordPress, the way it would hack from the weakest point, and, and that is what? To the username and password. So whoever used username admin, password, password, Got hacked, so it couldn't it couldn't hack from anywhere else except from that weakest point. That that tells you how strong it is. Does that make sense? So don't let people tell you that it's not secure. No, it is actually secure. It just unfortunately most of the time is the user's fault. So right now with the latest update, WordPress will generate its highly secure password. Look at that. It's, who can remember that password, right? It will highly uh, securely generate password for you. If you don't want it, you can just remove it and make another password for you. And it will give you a level like weak or good or strong. It will tell you that. Okay. Any question for the users? Are we good? How do you understand? Are we good? All right. All right. So we go back to dashboard. So now we're going to look from the left hand side because because previously all we talked about just the upper level, right? And I guess like I said, most people actually don't even look at that area. We also mostly look at the sidebar, right? So right here, <clears throat> when you click on the dashboard, you can click home, you can click on update. Under the update, it will tell you what update is needed. Like here, there's a plugin that needs an update, if, uh, and there's a theme that needs an update. Okay, it will tell you exactly what kind of update do you need. Since it's a fresh website, there's nothing added. I'm just going to select this and update it. Because there's nothing there, right? So there you go. Uh, Kismet updated successfully. Okay, we'll go back to... The update option one more time. Dashboard. There's one more update for the theme, theme 2016. And remember, you need to write this thing down. Anytime, if you are going to do the update by yourself, make sure the first thing you do, you do, you, you run a backup. You run a backup. There's a plugin for that. You run a full backup first. Okay. Secondly, if there are plugins that requires an update, do one plugin at a time. One plugin at a time. Don't do all of it because why? If it breaks, you don't know which one caused the issue. So if you update the first plugin, <clears throat> then go back to the website, see if everything is okay, then go to the second one, update, then go back to those. How would you do that? Here's another tip for you guys. 
Remember, all the time when you log into your <coughs> excuse me, when you log into your WordPress website, this is the dashboard, right? Keep this browser open, right? Then open another browser, and on this one, on this one, go to the actual site like that. So because anytime you make changes here, you come to this one and do a refresh. So you don't have to go back and forth, you know, like press back and before. Does that make sense? So leave one browser open for the dashboard and one browser for the live site. So when you update the plugin, then you come back right here and do a refresh. Okay, looks like everything is fine. Nothing is broken. Okay. So does that make sense? So that's what I mean by that. Okay, so that's what the update is for. It will tell you exactly what needs to be updated. And here's the popular question. Do I get notified if uh, WordPress needs an update? No, you won't get notified. When you log in, you'll see it. But there's a plugin for that that will actually notify you anytime uh, WordPress has a new update, so you can get an email, so you can go back and do the update if you want. Is it is it required? I, in most cases, I, it doesn't matter. I wouldn't even worry about it. Okay, but if you want to try it, you can give it a shot. Okay. All right. So now we are going to where post. Previously, we looked at post from the new on the top. The difference between this post and this one, as you can see, this one has more option. It says all posts. That means if you have a bunch of blog posts. When you click on all posts, it will show you all the blog posts. Right now, there's a sample that says hello world, right? If you click on add new, it will you know, take you to add a new blog post. Does that make sense? If you go to categories, this is where you are going to create the category. Does that make sense? Here's, here's, here's where you can create the category for your bunch of different topics. Okay? Tags, again, I don't create tags in advance. If I want to use a tag, I can basically do it while I'm blocking. Okay, so that's what it's for. Any questions so far about the categories and the tags and the add new and all posts? Yeah. Okay. All right. Media. When I go to the media, same thing. There you go. This is where you upload the images. This is where you upload the files. That's what it's for. You can click on add new right here. Drag and drop or select from your laptop and whatnot. Okay. Pretty simple, right? Sweet. Any question? All right, let's go to pages. Same thing, you have all pages, and you have add new. So I can add a new page, exactly what we talked about before, or I can check all our pages that we created so far, and I can see you created like one, two, three, four pages, right? There you go. So you created four pages, and one of them in the trash. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Any question about the pages? Good, good. All right, comments, this is where when somebody comment on your blog post, and this is where you can see all the comments, you can approve it, you can reply to that person, you can edit it if you want to, or you can trash it or spam it. Okay, that's the comment section. Now, if you go to appearance, this is where you're going to have themes, customize, widget, menu, header, background, and editor. So when I click on the theme, this will show me what theme I'm currently using. Does that make sense? It will show, show me right now what theme I'm using right now and plus other theme that I actually added but never used it. Now here's a tip for you. If you're not going to use any of the theme, do not keep them. Delete them. You don't want them, you don't want to take up space. Why are you going to waste that space if you're not going to use it? Does that make sense? So there's no point of keeping those themes if you're not going to use them, just you know, clear out some space. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So right now we're using the theme uh, 2016 right here. <clears throat> That's the theme that we are using. Okay. I can click on customize here, or I can click customize on the left hand side. Both are the same. When I click customize, this does not mean full customization. This is just like to show you how to make few tweaks here and there. Okay. So when I click on customize, <clears throat> there you go. So the first thing is the name of the website, the name of the theme, and it's active, site identity. When I click on site identity, here is the name of the website. You all see that, the name of the website, right? Then the tagline, and there's an option that says, I don't know if it's not showing there. There's an option that says display header text. If I uncheck it, what happens? It's gone. 
And if I click yes, and I can see the, the actual text. Now what is that for? If I don't want the actual text, if I want an image there, I can uncheck the, what do you call it, the display header text and add like a logo or an image here. Does that make sense? So let's go ahead and try that. I don't know why it's not showing that. Let's see. It's supposed to... Hmm. It's not showing. Okay. Anybody use Canva before? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah? I love Canva. Okay. So here's the thing you need to understand real quick. <clears throat> Every theme... Every theme has its own <clears throat> dimension for the image on the header because this area is called the header area, right? Mm -hmm. So every theme has their own dimension. So they're not all the same. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if I want to make a header for this one, I need to check and see what is the size dimension for this specific theme. So right here, it's telling me on the theme 2016, it says what? Uh, the at least, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm sorry, not the side icon. Let me go back. I'll go to header image. Yeah, header image. The size is 1200 by 280. So for theme 2016, the image that I can add right there is 1200 by 280. So what I need to do, I can go to Canva. Okay, let's go to Canva. I'm going to show you how to quickly make a nice header. As you can see, mostly for social media, and there is no option for WordPress. So what should I do? Where? There you go. Use custom dimension. And there you go. 1200 by 280. Right? Design. Okay. And now I can probably use a text. Let's put a text right there. Let's see, the name of the website is... Oops, let me plug this one. 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 Okay, so the name of the website is what? Redeemed Furniture Company, right? Yes. Just for the heck of, you know, quickly, nothing really fancy. I mean, you definitely need to have some sort of cool logo, but for now, we're just going to put this. Uh, let's see what kind of font do you like. See all these fonts? See that? Yeah. A bunch of fonts. Oh, look at that. I like, uh, I like, uh, let's see, Oswald. See that? Okay. Bring a little bit up. Let me go ahead and tweak it real quick. See that? You like it? Huh? <coughs> there you go, let's see. Do you have a specific color or no? No. no. So let's see. Bring it like that. You also had a tagline, right? Was it a tagline? Everything has value. Uh, let's see. Everything has value. Okay, let's want to put the tagline. Subheading right there. There you go. Okay. How about that? Isn't it nice? Huh? You like it? Huh? Huh? Okay. There you go. Okay, just got something, something fast and quick. Uh, download it as a JPEG. See that? For the web. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to go back to what you call it right here. Oops, let me see. What it says header image. Right? And I'm going to add the image, of course, to the media. The media file, which is right here. Okay, uh, the title, the alt text, I can say uh, logo for the company name. Okay, so the company name. I'm putting alt text, remember? I'm putting alt text, and I think the file name is already says Redeem Furniture Company. That's the name of the file. And crop, there you go. Let's see how it looks. See that? So in this theme, 
the image is actually below the navigation. But you also have this kind of kind of weird, right? So all I have to do is go back to site identity and check voila. Then you click save and publish. Always click save and publish, right? So let's go ahead and see how it looks right here. There you go. Okay. Mgar. Pretty nice, huh? So it depends. Some theme, the header can be on the top of the navigation, but it looks like on 2016 it's below the navigation. Okay. Now, there's an option here, it says side icon. You know what is this for? The side icon? Do you see this? <coughs> for Canva, right? That's what the site icon is for. So you can upload an image, like a logo, for your business. So that Kirby, we have that too. See that? Do we have it? Yeah, we do. See that? That's the site icon. Okay, it's like a brand. So people see it, it's like a brand. So that's what the site icon is for. This is a new feature. This wasn't there before. With the update, they added this feature. Previously, you have to go to the settings, somewhere else, and do it right now, okay? So there you go, that's a side identity. Colors, on theme 2016, let's see what is this for, background color. Ooh, ooh, okay. I'll just keep it white. Okay, that's what it's for. Uh, page, background color, link color, what is this for? <coughs> I don't know, link color. Main text, as you can see, it's all in black. Oh, and that's another purple, right? Now keep it black. Okay? So these are the options. Because every team has their own specific option that you can work with. That doesn't even have the same option somewhere else. Okay? Uh, header image, we already talked about that. Background image, please ignore the background image. You don't want to have like a bunch of weird things in the background. Just make sure all the focus on the site. Because you don't want people to, to get distracted. You know how some of them have like a background image? You don't want to do that because... What about, what about texture? It depends because if it's too much, like I know Kirby because he used to have like a picture of a kaibo in the back and I'm like, yeah. it's got a little bit distracting. You want to keep it nice and Not clean. Not a picture, but, but just a texture. It's fine. I prefer something like this. You know why? Because it just... Cleaner. Cleaner and plus it will, it will force my eye to look at the content and not anywhere else. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. Then that's the background. Menus, we'll go back to that later. Uh, widget, same thing. We can go back to widget later. It's already right here. Static front page, same thing. Because remember, what did we say? By default, the home page is what? The block page. So what you can do under the this option, you can say, I want the, you can, you can create a home page and make it static and create a block page and move the home page to the block page. So the block page will become the block page. Does that make sense? Let me show you an example when we go there. Okay, let me just go back. I'm gonna close this. So, for example, for example, right now, you made the home page to be a static page, right? That's what you did. But you haven't created a blog page right here. So, what we need to do, we need to create a page called a blog, okay? Because by default, the home page is what a blog page, right? But I'm gonna create another page. I'm gonna call it blog. Because I want every time I post something, I want it to show up on the blog page. So I created the page, right? That's what I did. And I'm gonna kind of jump quickly to the menu. When I go to the menu, there you go, there's a blog page. I add the blog page to the menu, okay? I'll save it. Then, once I save it, then I'll go back where? To, let's say, customize. If I'm too fast, stop me. Customize, static front page, right here. This is the home page, right? Post page, blog, and save. And now, when I refresh it, see that? So every time you do a post, it will show up right here. See that? All the blog posts now will show up on the blog page because I added it as a post page. Does that make sense? So this is how you configure the front to make it either static or a bunch of content. Okay? Alright. If, if the front page is a blog post, is, the, is a blog By page, default. Will it then automatically also be on the front page? Since each new blog post? <coughs> if the home page is a blog page, that's the front page. Okay. 
But if you don't want to use it as a blog page, then you can move it by going to the setting. Yeah. Which you just did. Yes, exactly. Right here, where it says the front page display, ah. a static page. Okay. Which page do you want to be static? A home, a about us. Okay. You select that. And the post page. Which page do you want to be a post? A news page, okay. article page. That's how you do that. Okay. I just can't really see that. Okay. It should be under uh, static front page yeah. under the customize. Site identity, colors, oh, header that. image. Okay, you see it now? Yes. All right, got it. All right. So let's go back to, we talked about the customize, right? Any question about customize? Remember, everything has a little bit of slight difference feature, okay? Now let's talk about widgets. So what is widgets? Widget basically, Every WordPress website has a, what, a sidebar, so every option on the sidebar is part of the widget. So right here in theme 2016, for example, I'm like, where did the widget go? Let's see, where did the widget, widget, widget go? Right now, there's nothing there added on the sidebar. But if I grab calendar, if I put, uh, let's see, calendar and save it and let's see if it shows up on the sidebar okay let's refresh it there you go isn't that cool right so that's what the widget for so you can add ads boxes of you know like like a, like an ad box or um, mm -hmm. booking or you know all that stuff. that's on the sidebar so that's what it, for. it says a sidebar okay that's what is it for you can also add a MailChimp lead capture by grabbing the text box and putting it here and adding the MailChimp code right there so you can see the lead capture. You can also put, for example, search box. Look at that. If I put search box, save, <coughs> and now I refresh it, check it out. Now I have a search box. See that? Pretty nice, right? Okay. So that's what the widgets are for. <coughs> All right? I can add categories. If it's a block, it's like if it's a content page and you want to have a categories, I can add that. I can add archives. Uh, let's see, archives. There you go. And let's go and refresh it. There you go. See that? Now, what happened is if I go to all the pages, what happened? Every page has what? The sidebar now. But I don't want every page to have a sidebar. So what I will do, I'll go back to where? Pages, then I will highlight all of them, select edit, okay, then apply, and what does it say here? Templates, see that? Click the template. Oh, it doesn't have a white screen? Interesting. Um, hmm. Let me see. Used to be typically should give you like a width. I don't know why I didn't do that. Let me refresh it. Nope. So I don't know why I didn't do that in 2016. That's odd. What were the things that you can change? Hmm. What is what can you change? I'm trying to make it like a width. No, no, I know, but what? Okay, default page. Yeah. Template. Let me go to the exact page because it's supposed to give you that option. Let me see, contact us, page attribute. Yeah, for some reason, I don't know why it doesn't give me that option. Interesting. I don't know, I don't know. To be honest, I'm sorry, I don't know. But if I go to this, uh, let me try another theme real quick, just to show you how it works, okay? I'm gonna select, what theme is this, Arcade? I don't know why it only succeed doesn't have that. I'm gonna look for 20. And I also forgot to mention when you upload themes, I forgot to mention that too. One second. There you go. So this is uh, the 2013 right here. Let me just quickly install this. I'm gonna show you what I mean by. There you go, okay. So this is another theme. 
2013. So let's see if I can disable the, the what do you call it, the sidebar, if possible. It's still not doing it. Hmm. I thought I saw that somewhere where you could hide the sidebar. Yeah, but I don't see it. Even though you saw a different theme, it's still not doing it. <laughs> oh, well. <coughs> I'm not sure why it's not doing it. Okay. I apologize. I don't know why it's not doing it, but we'll see later on if I can figure it out. Now, one thing I forgot to mention before I uh, go to the widget is that when you click on themes, of course it shows you what theme I'm using, right? But I forgot to tell you guys, when you add new new theme, you have these options. You see that? Featured theme, a popular theme, latest, favorites, or featured filter. So when you click on a featured filter, you can select what kind of theme do you want and do a search. Or you can just do a search for, let's say, real estate. See that? And it's going to show you all the theme that is for real estate niche. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's what it's for. So when you go to feature, you can view all of these, you can do a live preview, just do a preview, see how it looks. See that? And if you like it, just click install. That's how you do it. Okay? Look at how many themes are there. There's so many. See that? A lot. Popular. Look at all that. These are all free. Okay? These are all free. One of the ones that I like to use is called uh, Catchbox. For content base, and this one right here called uh, Catchbox. This is the Catchbox, okay? It's very simple, very basic. So if you're gonna do a content based website or even like a retail store, you can definitely use uh, what you call it, a uh, Catchbox. So let me see if I can install this real quick and if it does anything with the sidebar. Because the sidebar is driving me nuts. Uh, let's see. By the way, who's your hosting? One one. Ah, there you go. This one has it. Beautiful. Okay, we're gonna use Catchbox instead of 2016. Okay, so check it out. So right now, because I used a uh, different theme, of course that banner we created is not there because it's a different theme of a different size, so it's gone. But we have these sidebars, right, for every page, right? So let's go to the pages, highlight, we we'll go to what, edit, then see the template, what does it say? Full width, disable, sidebar template. I pick that, I, I unselect the blog, update, now look, refresh, see, no sidebar. But if I go to the blog, sidebar, got it? Pretty neat, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What time is it now? Uh, Another break? Yes? Yes. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Alright, folks. And we're going to take another five to ten minute breaks and we'll be back.